President. The Senator from Massachusetts. I seek uh, re recognition to uh, speak. Without objection. I thank you, Madam President, and I rise today in support of the nomination of Indira Talwani uh, to the United States District Court for the District of Massachusetts. Ms. Talwani is a brilliant, accomplished attorney who will make an outstanding addition to our district court. Uh, she is an American success story. Her parents were immigrants from India and Germany. If confirmed, she will be the first Asian American district court judge in Massachusetts. Um, she has received honors throughout her uh, career uh, and her background uh, and experiences uh, unquestionably qualify her for the bench. Uh, she will be someone who uh, the people of Massachusetts, of New England, uh, and our whole country uh, can be uh, proud of. Uh, I believe she will be an objective, unbiased decision maker, uh, and that's exactly what we need for our district court uh, judges, uh, and I recommend her wholeheartedly uh, to the members of this body. Uh, I would also like to turn to another subject, and that is the Shaheen Portman Energy Efficiency Bill, which is going to be considered here today. Uh, and I recommend it, again, to all of the members of this body because um, it is a bill that has been developed across parties uh, in a bipartisan way. Uh, across industries, across labor, across consumer groups. Um, this is a bill uh, which on a bipartisan basis is going to lead to improvement in the building codes of the United States to reduce energy consumption, uh, increases in the efficiency of industrial equipment uh, to reduce energy consumption, uh, to increase the energy efficiency of federal buildings in our country to reduce energy consumption, and none of it is being done on a mandatory basis. It is all done on a voluntary basis. That's why we have a consensus here today. Now, let me also tell you what the consensus includes. It includes an understanding that this is going to create 190,000 new jobs in our country. Let me repeat that, 190,000 new jobs in America from the Shaheen Portman bill. It will save consumers $16 billion per year. Save consumers $16 billion. And it will cut carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, polluting our country and our world by the equivalent of 22 million automobiles per year by the year 2030. Now, these are benefits that are going to be maximized because we're going to start working smarter, not harder, just reducing the amount of energy which we consume, reducing the amount of CO2 that we send up into the atmosphere, and doing it on a voluntary basis. Voluntary. So let's have a vote here out on the Senate floor. Let's just get it done. Let's agree on what it is that we know is going to help our country. We know it's going to create more jobs. But the Republicans say, no, we need a vote on the Keystone Pipeline. We need a vote on something which is highly controversial, and we demand that vote. Majority Leader Reid agrees to have a vote on the Keystone Pipeline, agrees to have a vote on the Keystone Pipeline. Now, how controversial is that? Well, you're going to take the dirtiest oil in the world, come down from Canada, build a pipeline through the United States, bring it down to Port Arthur, Texas, Port Arthur, Texas, which is a tax-free export zone, and then that, that oil is going to be exported out of the United States. Now, where are the benefits for the United States in this scenario? We take the environmental risks. The Canadians get the benefit of having the dirtiest oil in the world come through that pipeline. And then 
it's going to be exported out of the United States. How do I know it's going to be exported out of the United States? Because I, as a member of the House of Representatives, had this amendment over and over brought to the floor of the United States House of Representatives, and every time the American Petroleum Institute opposed it. Even though they say it's all about North American energy independence, ha <laughs> ha, when you have a vote, every Republican votes to keep that provision out of the bill so the oil can go out of the United States. So just stop this about energy independence for North America. If you don't, as a part of the Keystone Pipeline, then accept a provision where the oil has to stay here. Otherwise, what's the point? I'll tell you what the point is. It's maximizing profit for the oil industry because they make more money when they sell the oil outside the United States than they do here. American consumers don't get the benefit of it. No. The, the world is going to get the benefit of it, and the oil industry is. The Canadians are. But Majority Leader Reid said, we'll have a vote on that. We'll have a vote on it. And then what happens? We come back this week and the Republicans say, that's not enough. This nice energy efficiency bill is going to be the vehicle for even more and more and more highly controversial issues, which at the end of the day is all meant to do what? To kill the energy efficiency bill because it reduces the amount of CO2 that goes up into the atmosphere on a voluntary basis. And how do we know that? Well, we know it because their amendments go right to the heart of what it is that we should all now finally accept. They want to have a vote, a big debate here, that would prevent the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States of America from regulating greenhouse gases, from regulating global warming. That's the debate they want to have. They're saying no energy efficiency bill that everyone agrees on unless we have a debate on whether our Environmental Protection Agency can have a debate, can, can regulate greenhouse gases. It's 2014. It's 100 degrees in Kansas today. There are hurricanes, cyclones, the tides are rising, the water is warmer, the storms are more intense. It's not just here, it's all across the planet. The scientists agree that there is global warming. Their amendment would prohibit the Environmental Protection Agency from regulating global warming pollution. That's what they call something that's reasonable. We have a bill that everyone agrees should pass, but they, after getting an agreement that the Keystone Pipeline would be debated out here, they just continue on down the pathway. Yesterday, the Obama administration released the third U.S national climate assessment from droughts in the west to deluges in the east. This new report shows that we are becoming the United States of climate change. And we must act in order to keep our nation safe and strong. Second, they want to attach a provision to massively expand our exports of natural gas. They want to take the natural gas, which is being drilled for here in the United States, and put it on ships and send it out of our country. And the more natural gas that we export out of our country, the higher the price is going to go for natural gas in our country. It'll be more expensive to generate electricity. It'll be more expensive for manufacturers to make their products in our country. It'll be more expensive for those that want to build natural gas buses, natural gas trucks, to be able to do so. That is something they want to do. Export the natural gas of the United States to other countries. Does that make any sense? Is that the kind of non-controversial discussion that we should have at the time that we have an energy efficiency bill that should go through? No, not at all. This is meant to dynamite the energy efficiency bill. That's what that amendment is all about. And then they want to add a rider to the uh, bill as well uh, that will, in fact, prohibit the EPA from even considering at any time 
in the future a price on carbon, or for, the mo for, the, for, for that matter, prohibiting anyone. So these are just loaded, highly controversial amendments, all at their heart kind of denying the reality of how much harm they will do to the United States. And meanwhile, the Koch brothers smile. They smile because they know that it's all going to accomplish their principal goal, making sure that no energy efficiency bill passes in the United States Senate this year. No reduction in the amount of greenhouse gases that we are sending up. That's the agenda. It's going to be the agenda into the future for the Republican Party. It has been the agenda. And I look out and I see Republicans who have worked hard to put together this energy efficiency bill. I praise them for their willingness to come together on common sense, reasonable provisions that reduce the amount of carbon going up into the atmosphere on a voluntary basis by encouraging the creation of 190,000 new jobs in our country that Democrats and Republicans agree on. And I see this whole process getting hijacked by the Koch brothers, by the oil industry, by the natural gas industry, that wants it to devolve into a big debate over science that is now completely and totally consensus, not only here, but around the planet. The planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to engage in preventative care to avoid the worst, most catastrophic impact of climate change on this watch that we have here in the United States Senate. But no, the process is being hijacked. You can see it here. They just want to torpedo this process so that more oil, more coal, more profits for coal and oil companies becomes the agenda. And so all I can say, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, we're at an historic turning point. The headlines in the newspapers across this country and across this planet, they tell the story today. Climate risks growing. That's the consensus. That's the reality. That's what this energy efficiency bill is meant to deal with. And what will happen, and we're going to see it over and over again, is you're going to have member after member on the Republican side get up and demand that we have a debate on something unrelated to this energy efficiency bill, where there is a consensus. They want to take climate science that is a consensus around the planet and have another huge debate here on it. That's the tragedy of this. The green generation, the young people in our country, they know that is the challenge of this generation. We as a nation, we have to stand up. A high percentage of that CO2 up in the atmosphere is red, white, and blue. We cannot preach temperance from a bar stool. We cannot tell the rest of the world, you must do something if we are not doing something. That is what the bill that we should be debating here today would do on a bipartisan basis. Reduce greenhouse gases, create 190,000 jobs, and do it all on a voluntary basis. Too simple, too good, too clearly consistent with these two objectives of job creation and greenhouse gas reductions. So I think that what we're seeing is the conserve in conservative no longer exists. Not with the Koch brothers around. So this is now just going to be something that short circuits the legislative process. It ensures that the energy efficiency bill is collateral damage because of their insistence on these amendments. When instead, we have a chance this week to say that we are going to move forward on a smart energy policy, that we will work smarter, not harder, that we should come together to pass this bill without these giveaways to the oil industry, to the coal industry, so that we can create jobs, we can save energy. Uh, and I would recommend 
to uh, my colleagues. That is the correct historical position that this chamber should be in right now. Uh, and at this point, Madam President, I yield back the balance of my time. Madam President. Senator from Utah. Madam President, uh, today I will introduce legislation to help